this message for the day. Let us all pray as we go. And pray that the anointed church him and spread across the room to all of us. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. Boy, I look around and saw all these suits come in this morning. I said, Boy, I ain't got no business preaching this morning. Got preachers everywhere. All the way from Africa, everywhere. So, uh, I just, uh, they, uh, I gave them all a chance. I, I looked at them and see what the spirit was going to move. All of them, they kept moving. So, uh, But uh, I, uh, I'm glad to be here, I really am. I, I uh, am enjoying uh, sharing, and, uh, and I uh, thank God that, uh, that I'm surrounded by uh, uh, such a great group of people. Amen. 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 Uh, I want to continue on the series that we started. Um, and I've not been on the series, I promise you, I wouldn't be standing up here today. Um, but uh, I, I want to kind of get through it. So I hope you have your Bibles. I'm going to carry you through uh, quite a few passages uh, this morning. And, um, and so um, and we going to pull up all the, the parents are here uh, this morning, all the grandparents and great-grandparents. And uh, hopefully we'll have a word for, for everybody. So turn to Psalms 127. I know we do our parenting series from the book of Proverbs. We're going to start off in the book of Psalms this morning. Uh, Psalms 127. Glad to have Brother Sister Black here. Amen. And thank God for them and all the tremendous work they're doing all over the world. We thank God for them. Amen. Amen. Uh, Psalms 127. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to start at verse number, I can't really see it, let me find my glass and I can tell you what verse it is. Birthday's catching up with you, man. Lost awesome my glasses now. <laughs> and finally, here we go. Here we go. Uh, that's better, Sister Lily, I can see now. Psalms 127, uh, beginning at verse number 3. And it says, Sons are a heritage from the Lord, children a reward from Him, like arrows in the hand of a warrior of the sons born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame, and when they contend with their enemies to the gate. Amen. Amen. And I, uh, this morning, uh, I just simply want to talk about the arrows. I want to just, just focus our attention uh, on, on the arrows. Um, Sometimes you can't tell the difference. 
and so 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 none of us can go back and change the things that we have done already. However, if you're a parent, God has given us another chance. Amen. Um, what we can do is, although we can't turn back the hands of time, we can do the best we can to help our kids not make some of those mistakes. Right. Amen. All right. Amen. Nothing <clears throat> would hurt me worse than to see my kids repeating some of the same mistakes that I made. And I, uh, they are no perfect kids and they are no perfect person. Uh, however, uh, Proverbs teach, teaches us and the entire Bible teaches us um, <clears throat> that if we will use wisdom in our decision making, then we'll make less mistakes. Amen. Some mistakes we some things happen we have no control over. For uh, instance, when a storm comes through, we have no control over that. Uh, but we we can make better decisions. And that's why the book of Proverbs is written so that so that we can avoid uh, falling into some of those uh, traps that, that, that are out there uh, that's been laid out by the enemy. And so that's why the Bible tells us that when we have kids that, that that God allows us to be parents of these kids, and then he gives them to us. All right? And he gives us a command back in Proverbs 22, which is it's coming, 22 and 6, which is really our key verse. He says, I'm going to give you these kids back, and I want you to train them up. Amen. I want you to train them up. I, 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 I have performed a miracle for you, but now I need you to work together with me to train up. Uh, these child, this, these, these children that I'm giving you. And so, he uses uh, the, the word picture, I would like to call them, uh, as arrows. He calls these, these children that we have, he calls them arrows. And he says that these arrows are a blessing. They are a blessing. He, he, as a matter of fact, he says that these arrows are a gift from God. Amen. Everybody doesn't have arrows. Amen. All right. Amen. I didn't have any arrows until I was late in life. And I tell you, it, 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 by the time I hit 30, it started to bother me. And I started to wonder what I was going to have any kids. And so I guess God did that in such a way that when I got my life, I was just, well, I was thankful. Amen. Because I was, uh, my head had started trying to break the roof. <laughs> I didn't know if I was going to get an arrow. But by the grace of God, he has given me, he's given me, he's given me more than I ever, ever dreamed of. Amen. But he referred to them as arrows. And, and so, what is the purpose of an arrow? I'm going to start right there. So what is the purpose of an arrow? Why don't you use this word picture out of all of these? Well, an arrow in the hand of a holy person means that you're going to shoot this arrow out to destroy evil. Amen. Amen. The Amen. enemy is over there. And so the purpose of an arrow is you take this arrow and you stand away from the enemy. And you, you put the arrow in your bow and you shoot the arrow out. And so if the arrow is guided in the right direction, and if the arrow is sharp enough when it get there, then it'll take out the enemy. Yeah, that was God's word picture. And he says that this is a picture of who our kids are. They're going to grow up into a time that we won't, that we won't make it to. They're all, all they remain evil. Uh, when our kids get ultimately where they're going, we may or may not be there. Amen. But it's our job to shoot them off. Amen. All right. Amen. That's our job, to shoot them off. To, to shoot them on. And so I, I want I to you to think about two questions as we, as we think about these arrows. Number, number one, what are we aiming for? What are we aiming for? When we, when we prepare our kids to shoot them off, what are we aiming for? And number two, when the arrows get there, will they be sharp enough to do the job? Because we can shoot them off toward the enemy, but if the arrows are too dull when they get there, they won't make they, they won't do any good. 
So what are you? So when, when it comes to to raising your kid, what is what is your aim? What do you want to accomplish? Well, uh, keep that in mind. I won't answer that this year. I'll, I'll let you you you, you answer that. Well, as you know, before you can shoot an arrow, you have to prepare the arrow. Amen. Amen. And so, so, um, um, so as we as we get these kids and these arrows in our home, and our whole job for 18 years, how many years they're there? Uh, it goes by fast. You know? it, it, it zooms by, it zooms by. One of my arrows about to get married. Well, I tell you, it's, it seemed like yesterday. She, she came in, and hollering and screaming, and uh, I got to. Be here long, so I got to mess with her. Well, she came here long. Boy, she got here. Well, look, she came in here looking for food. <laughs> came into the world. Stayed at my house, my wife's house. Ate up all our food. <laughs> and know what she did? After about 18, 19 years. Bye, Daddy. <laughs> Bye, Mom. That's it. That's it. No, no tip, no nothing. That's what you do. That's what they do. They come in, they, they, you, you, you pour everything you have into them. And then all of a sudden one day, they just walk out. That's it. And that's how it is, you know, with an arrow. You, you, you may spend, you may spend uh, days, months, years getting that arrow just right, right? But then you shoot it. And sometimes you don't even know if it hit the target or not, right? right. You just shoot out there. Yeah. And so that's what it's like having, that's what it's like having children. So, so how do we prepare our arrows before we shoot them all? Uh, number one, the foundation of preparing our arrows is this thing called love. Love. If we don't get the arrows ready, we have to love. I, I want to use a, a verse. If you go to Proverbs 21 and 21, I, I want to put a little bit different spin on this. God does, not me. Proverbs 21 and 21 says, He who pursues righteousness and love finds life, prosperity, and honor. Now, do you see that? So if you look at that, if those are three things we want our kids to, 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 to accomplish in life, we want them to, first of all, have life. We want them to, we want them to live, right? We want them to prosper. And we want them to live a life of honor. Those are the three things that, that, that we want our kids to accomplish, among other things. But he says, here is how we get them there. He says, he who pursues righteousness and love of hope. You see the order? He says, those who, those who seek righteousness and then love, when we fire the arrow, then the arrow will find love, prosperity, and honor. So, 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 so the goal is not to just love our kids, and, and, and most of us love our kids. You know, you, you can find the worst person in the world, and they all love their kids. Amen. All right. But it doesn't mean that the arrow is going to turn out like it's supposed to, just because you love them. Okay. Amen. There's something in front of the love. And that love, that thing that comes in front of love is righteousness. Righteousness. If you want your arrows to turn out uh, with prosperity and honor and life, Right. And we first, as parents, have to live, amen, amen. a yes. righteous life. Mm -hmm. We have to model righteousness because they don't, they don't understand how to read when they get here, right? They don't understand how to read and write and all that stuff. What, are, well, what do they know? We have to model that before them. Even in all the stuff that we're going through, even in our 
unrighteousness, even in our imperfections, every day of our lives, we have to try to do the best we can to be righteous in the eyes of God. Yes. Because guess what? The arrows are watching. Mm -hmm. yes. They're watching your every move. And you can go outside the house and say whatever you want to say. And you can go outside the house and pretend you whoever you want to pretend. But the arrows live with you. Amen? Amen. And the arrows know the disconnect between what you say out in the street versus what you do in the house. Amen? Oh, yeah. Amen. The arrows. Them arrows got all the time on the road roots. They're there when you get up. Amen. Amen. And they're there when you go to sleep. They know you better than anyone. Yes. And so he says, if we, if, if we want the arrows to end up where we want them to end up, then we have to model this thing called righteousness um, before them and love them. Yes, love. But what, what kind of love would it what kind of love does it take uh, for the arrows to, to, to turn out right? Well, uh, flip with me to 1 Corinthians 13 and 1. 1 Corinthians 13 and 1. You may, you may know this. And I know I'm going to jump, jump around a lot, but I, I, want, I want us to get the principle of what it takes to, to, to get our arrows right. It says, if I speak with the tongues of men and angels and do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or a clanging symbol. That's, that's 13 and 1. So what is that verse teaching us about love? What, what is it it's telling us? Well, first of all, it says that, that we have to make loving our kids a priority. Amen. We have to make it a priority. First of all, we have to live righteous before them. We have to make it a priority. Well, where are you getting that from, preacher? Well, this says, and, 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 and you know, we, we, can, we can go through a whole bunch of stuff on what that, what that verse means, but it says that if all you're doing is making noise, if all, if all you're doing and I'm doing is talking about how much we love our kids, and we are not showing love, then we're not making them a priority. All right. oh, yeah. Love has to be a priority. Yeah. Well, how do we know our kids are, or what, how do we know our kids feel love? They feel love when we make them a priority. Yeah, we have other stuff to do. Yeah, we have to work. Yeah, we have to make a living. Yeah, we have to feed them. Yeah, yeah we have other responsibilities. But our kids have to know deep down that they are a priority. Mm -hmm. And if they do not feel like they are a priority, then they do not feel love. Mm -hmm. Amen. I go through that with my wife all the time. So I'm getting trouble now, brother Harris. <laughs> Man, my good woman say I'm good with it. Y'all do it, baby? Yeah, tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cooking too. <laughs> you know, my wife kicked me on the spot. You know what? You know, one of the things that happened when I said I do, um, she says that I will have to be a priority. Amen. 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 She feels like anything or anybody is a priority over her. Yeah. Ooh, look out. Right. <laughs> I hear about it, amen. Yeah. Because in her book, if I say I love her, then she must be a priority, amen. Amen, yeah. amen. all women are going to say amen on that one. Yeah. I'm sorry about that, Brother Black. <laughs> Sister Black with me. <laughs> Tennis shoes. We can't tennis shoes. 
that's not right. Sneak on <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought I got it right. You <laughs> can't, can't buy a pair of sneakers. I don't care how much money you pay for them. You can't buy them an Xbox. Whatever that box it is, I don't care how much you pay for it. It does not substitute for you. All right. You know, I, I, this is going to be real deep. But right now, I don't want you to miss this because we use it in another context, but we don't use it with our children. You cannot buy love. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Amen. You can't buy it. You can't buy it. And sometimes we feel like we have done our job as parents when we buy them things. You know, you walking around, uh, you walk around with some 200 dollars t-shirt. And the kids are going, so what? That's true. So what? That's true. What I would Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Plus it helped me get some act right too. Amen. 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 That's what that it makes them feel love. Because the goal is in order to shoot the arrow. Well, don't you miss this? In order to shoot the arrow and it hit the target, it's got to be a straight arrow.
picture of the generations. You see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's mom. Man. Wait a minute, I'm sorry. Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> that's mom. That's grandchild. Ain't that, ain't that, ain't that yeah, grandchild. Yeah, that's a picture. I think that as well. She got all the children. She got the books right there. She got, she got the daughter and the granddaughter. That's a generation. That's how it's supposed to work. Hey, man.
emotions, isn't it? I don't want her to go. Amen. But that's what she's put here to do. Amen. Amen. And so even though I'm going, you know, even though I have mixed emotions, my job as a parent is to prepare Amen. them to be shocked. Because they got a job to do one day too. Amen. 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 So we all come back next week. I got some more. I, I promise you. If you don't believe me, come up here and look. Let me, let me scroll. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot more to say, but we got to, we got to teach our kids how to make better choices. Amen. 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 That's awesome. Amen. Amen. I, I, I hope this is helpful to you as a parent. It certainly helpful helpful to me as I read and prepare. God's word is so powerful. It's so powerful. I, I wish. I'd like to say we're going to have a